I've lived in Pike Falls, Georgia for my entire life. Pike Falls has a population of less than a thousand. The town's mostly populated by working class people. Many of us haven't even graduated from high school. The largest employer in town is a lumber mill and there are more bars than traffic lights. Everybody knows everybody. And they're not fond of outsiders. And after last weekend, uh, neither am I. I'm writing this because last Friday my life changed forever. I often find myself in one of the town's many bars on Friday and Saturday nights. This is a common theme amongst the other residents of Pike Falls. Unlike many of these other folks, I had something to drink about. Something that was far worse than a stressful day at the mill. I got off work around 9pm and headed to my favourite bar. A cosy establishment called The Cabin to drink away my feelings. Well, I should have known something was off that night. The cabin was almost empty, except for a handful of people sitting at tables and one man sitting at the end of the bar. Oh, it was quiet. Too quiet for a Friday night, I thought to myself. I took my seat at the bar and ordered my usual drink. A tall, cold draft of Bud. I tried to focus on watching the football game that was on the TV that hangs over the bar. Except my eyes kept wandering to the man at the end of the bar. I hadn't seen him before and he was way overdressed for Pike Falls. He wore all black dress clothes and a black fedora. He was tall and thin. He appeared in his early 60s and very pale. He sat in silence at the end of the bar with his legs crossed, stirring what looked to be an old-fashioned. The few other patrons that were in the bar were lost in their quiet side conversations. Not this guy, though. He seemed to zone out into his drink as if he was reading a crystal ball or something. Well, finally, my curiosity got the better of me. I asked the bartender, Mikey, if he knew anything about the mysterious man at the end of the bar. In town on business or something. Said he was waiting on someone. Been here for a few hours. Maybe the poor chum got stood up, Mikey replied, distracted by the football game on TV. After downing three more drafts, I decided that no one should have to wait around alone, and I decided to approach the stranger. Hey bud, my name's Tim, I said holding out a hand to the stranger. The stranger's enamored gaze on his drink broke, and he stood to shake my hand. Ah, they call me water. It's nice to meet you, Tim, he said in a confident, accented voice. Damn, this guy is tall, I thought to myself. Despite being a rather tall man myself, the stranger towered over me by at least six inches. Well, I got talking to Waller for an hour or so, he was in town on business like Mikey suspected. Well, I was taken aback when I asked where he was from and what that accent was. He replied, Oh, son, I'm from down south. You wouldn't know if I told you. As time passed, the bar emptied even more. It was pushing midnight when the last patrons left. Strange for a Friday night. Usually townsfolk would stay until last call. Well, I didn't mind, though. Walter was an interesting enough guy with very entertaining stories. Judging from our conversation, it was clear. Walter didn't seem to understand football. Mikey even interjected at one point. You're from further down south and you don't know much about football. <laughs> Do you live under a rock or something, but Letting out a cackle. Ah, something like that, Walter said with a smooth-looking smirk. Some time passed and we kept talking about football and local affairs. As it got later, Mikey mentioned closing down early. He asked if we'd mind clearing out once we'd finished our drinks. Well, Walter and I obliged and wrapped up the conversation that we were having. Mikey went to the back to finish his inventory for the night. Now, this Walter guy was a little weird. The kind of person that the locals would have alienated right quick, but well, he seemed to be a good guy at the time. I was about to leave when Walter turned to me, with a lit cigar in his mouth, and said, Well, Tim, looks like my business partner must have backed out of our deal. He's, um, run into some trouble. <laughs> Thank you for keeping an old man like myself company. Uh, no problem, bud, I replied. Before he could reply, I was overcome by intrigue, and I asked, What kind of business are you involved in, exactly? I, um... Do trades of sorts. 
Nothing a youngster like you would be interested in, I assure you, Walter said in that same confident-sounding voice. I sensed that this meant he didn't want to share any more, so I took this at face value. Some of what he said, well, it had seemed strange. Well, that sounds neat. Looks like you do well for yourself, I told him while gesturing to an expensive-looking watch on his wrist. I then shook Walter's hand one more time. Well, it was nice to meet you, bud. You drive safe wherever you're going next, I told him. Wait, you deserve something for keeping a geezer like me company. No one else wanted to, after all, Walter said as I turned to walk away. Oh, there's no need for that. Oh, but I insist. What can I do for you, Tim? Walter said, sounding more urgent, almost pushy. Ah, oh, well, I guess you can pay my tab if you wouldn't mind, I replied, feeling very confused. God, was this guy some kind of creep? I thought to myself. Ah, oh, you can do better than that. What exactly do you want? Walter replied. Look, man, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, what do I want? I felt tense at this point, as though I was being interrogated. Oh, don't be foolish, Tim. Money, women, fame. I can give you any of those, Walter said while giving me an exasperated, tired look. How about your son? He said, getting wide-eyed, a newfound look of excitement on his face. My heart sank. I was overcome by a dozen feelings. Rage, guilt, horror, confusion, complete and utter shock, among others. I grabbed the cuff of Walter's jacket and pulled him close to me, close enough to whisper in his ear. What the hell did you say to me? How the fuck do you know anything about my son? I said while holding back tears. Walter smirked at me, and he pulled me in even closer. Because I'm the devil, son, he replied, as poised as ever. I let go of him immediately. Who was this bastard, I thought to myself, and how the hell did he know anything about my son? I stood there in complete shock. I was in tears at this point. What what happened to him? I asked, my voice cracking. I knew that my four-year-old son had been kidnapped three years ago, but I never knew more than that. The following downward spiral led to my divorce and subsequent patronage of this bar. I still blame myself for his disappearance, and so did my ex-wife. Oh, Tim, I could tell you, but you don't want to know that. Walter said, appearing to be as collected as ever. Go to hell, I yelled, now in a frantic state. I felt nauseous. How did he know about any of this? Oh, with pleasure. I was beginning to feel homesick anyway. His mouth twisted into a smirk. Alas, I am an honest man and I still owe you a favor. So when you return home tonight, your son will be waiting for you, safe and sound. And that was the last time I ever saw Walter. He strolled out of the door as Mikey came fumbling out of the back room, lugging a keg to the bar. Mikey saw that I was in tears. He could see my agonized facial expressions. God, how much had Mikey overheard, I thought. But what's wrong? Drink too much? Ex-wife giving you a hard time again? He asked in a reassuring voice as he sat the keg down. Yeah, something like that, I replied, my body still shaking. That other guy left? Mikey asked, gesturing to the end of the bar. Yeah, about damn time. God, I'm tired of these out-of-towners, I said. Holy shit, Mike said as he picked up Walter's glass. He then held up a stack of at least ten one hundred dollar bills. Oh, this one must not be that bad. He said loudly, with a big grin on his face. Yeah, I replied. I waited around for another hour or so while Mike closed down the bar. He'd offered to give me a ride home on account that I'd drunk more than I could even remember. I took him up on it as I'd come back tomorrow morning and pick my truck up. Mikey knew exactly where he was going, 
as this was a frequent occurrence. I only lived three miles from the bar in a secluded home in the forest. On my way home, we noticed an accident. A car had run off the road, down a ravine, and head on into a tree. When the headlights from Mikey's truck touched the tree, I could tell that it was covered in blood. Someone had died, I could feel it. What Walter said about whoever he'd intended to meet passed through my head and my heart sank into my stomach. I guess he had run into some trouble. A chill ran down my spine. God, what would be waiting for me at home? I thought to myself. Well, Mikey dropped me off at my house a few minutes later, and I stumbled through my front door, which I'd left unlocked. I turned the lights on, and that's when I saw it. My son walked down the stairs from the room that used to be his. I began crying, overcome by sadness. I almost vomited as the putrid stench of decay filled my nostrils. My son was standing in front of me. He wore the same clothes he'd been wearing the day he disappeared. The only difference was that his body was bloated and grey. His skin decayed and waterlogged, peeling off in chunks. There was a single gunshot wound between his eyes. Daddy, I made it home, he said as he embraced me. Well, I knelt down to embrace him back, still in shock and trying to hold back my repulsion. Then I put my hand on the back of his head and felt my hand sink into the exit wound that the bullet had made. I hadn't noticed the bloody cavern in the back of his skull until that point. I don't know what I was feeling inside, but... It was the worst feeling in the world. A mixture of pure guilt, horror and shock, but with a strange sense of relief. The moment these emotions hit me, my cell phone rang. It was an unknown number, but I knew who it was immediately. I pulled myself together as much as I could and answered. Hello, I said, aghast at what I was experiencing. And there it was, that smooth, calm voice. Hello, Tim. How's your son doing? Lucifer said. I dropped the phone at that moment and slipped into drunken unconsciousness. I awoke what felt like an eternity later, to the stench of decay. No, it hadn't been a dream. So the next time you meet a stranger, don't talk to them. You never know who they might be. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, you can download my music on SoundCloud, um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like, throw me a dollar or two, very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams, and bye bye.